Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on Eat Sleep Brief and this week we're going to be covering a video on showing you guys how you plumb a water box 180.5. The good news is that pretty much any water box you get that has plumbing they use almost the same plumbing all throughout. There is going to be variances in the dimensions of the plumbing uh, such as my tank has 32 millimeter for the a return and 40 240s for the emergency and the main drain so if you're out there watching this video and you have a water box maybe you don't have the 180.5 that i have i'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to follow along and hopefully i can teach you some tips or tricks along the way before we do dive into this week's episode we have had quite a bit of equipment coming in this week i had to get more of the emarco cement as you guys know i'm a big fan of that cement especially when you're doing a big scape like I am with overhangs and arches and so on you need to be sure that your rock is being held on pretty well uh, and that's why I always go to Marco's uh, cement another piece of equipment we also uh, had come in this week is the new great white skimmer uh, DC version so if you guys previously saw my build I had the AC version which worked great I had no problems with it it was really cool to receive the new DC because as you know it's probably going to make it even more of a beast than it already is. Two other things that came in is number one the Avast Marine Plank. It's an auto feeder. That I kind of wanted to show it in this video but then I was like this thing is so cool it requires its own video. You guys are probably saying so what can be different? An auto feeder just throws out you put food in it throws out food in a certain time and you're done. Well, let me tell you, if that's what you're thinking of an auto feeder, this is completely going to blow you away because it does that and a lot more. Quickly, to sum it up, it actually has a pump that saturates uh, the food, the pellet, whatever you're putting in there, powder, anything, saturates it with water, mixes it, then finally releases it into the tank. So, again, that thing is so cool. I'm like, I have to do a video just on that out by itself. Current USA sent me their light kit. On that one on itself, the background light kit, I should rephrase. Uh, if you guys remember, one of the big reasons I did my tank to have no background is because I wanted to be able to put a light strip, an LED light strip in the back that can change colors depending on my mood. You know, a lot of times, I don't know about you guys, that after looking at my reef tank for a certain amount of time, especially for particular lighting, I kind of get bored of it. Like I get used to it. So it's very cool I'm be able to add different accents on the background. So when I do get tired of it, guess what? Depending on my mood, I can easily change it. For the background light, I am going to have a whole video on its own, or at least a majority video on its own. Again, because I think it's a good enough and cool enough product that I think everybody's going to want to watch. As far as the rest, I'm still waiting on LEDs, return pump, wave makers. Oh, yes, and sump. I, I did a lot of thinking uh, this past week. Don't get me wrong, the stock sump that comes with the water box, it's perfect, it really is. It's one of the only manufacturers I know that gives you the right spaces of everything plus an a, a proper ATO built in. It's like everything you could ask for. The only thing is there's certain methods that I wanna run the tank where going with something different is only gonna help me uh, and make that easier. Also, I plan to run a lot of my reactors inside the sump. I still haven't decided, but you guys are probably saying, what do you mean by that? Aren't they all running the sump? Well, yes and no. Calc reactor is one of them, and calcium reactor, and another reactor that I haven't even announced that I think you guys are going to be. Put it this way, when I had my JBJ45, I dreamt of this reactor. I wish I could have this reactor. It actually came in this week. That's another thing I forgot to mention. But that for sure is going to be a whole video on its own. And if you want a hint of it, it's a nutrient export method. <laughs> so I'll leave that. But yes, going back to it, in the sump, I may opt to run a lot of these reactors in there to give me more cabinet space. I don't know yet. I may put a false wall in the left compartment and then that will allow me to put reactors in there. I still have a lot of choices, a lot of stuff I could do, but I want to have the option. That's the only reason I may opt to not go with the stock sump um, because, yeah, if I wasn't doing all those other methods, the stock sump would have been in there by now. So enough with me talking, enough with me blabbering. I'm pretty sure you guys want to see how easy and seamless the plumbing is done 
on this water box 180.5. Come check it out. You'll be very happy to see that the plumbing is very simple. It may look a little bit complicated. I know a lot of people are afraid of plumbing, but if you do purchase a water box, you're gonna be very happy to see how easy and how properly laid out the whole plumbing is. Starting on the right here, we have the return. So this is where the pump from the sump, that actually sounds pretty cool. The pump for the sump pumps the water up through here and then out through the nozzles. Optional, if you install the manifolds here, you get a total of two manifolds. Um, all you'd have to do is remove the little screw here, get that in there, and then screw each nozzle to here, which gives you a total of two manifolds. If you're running any other reactors or you need you know, any other water coming from the tank, you can install them here. Secondly, you're gonna have your main drain. The main drain is this pipe here. You have a very nice gate valve attached to it, and that's pretty much it. It goes down straight to the sump. Next, you have the emergency drain. So if ever this one gets clogged in any event that it did, it go to the emergency, and then that one also goes into the sump. You're gonna be very happy to see unions. They do a lot of union connections. You can see them here, you can see them here, here, and here. Another feature you're gonna notice is they give you a check valve right at the box. Another thing I saw, so you don't have to go purchase this, another thing I did notice that was actually very smart of Waterbox is installing the check valve pretty high in, in, the, in the system. And you're saying, what exactly do you mean? Well, a lot of people that I've seen install check valves, they'll put them low, closer to the pump. All that means is a little bit more water is able to flow back the way they did it, there's pretty much no water that's gonna flow back. As soon as it gets a little bit of back pressure, that's gonna stop, and obviously it's gonna stop the water from filling up your sump. Another nice thing they did when installing check valves, they do last quite some time, quite, actually quite, quite some time, but it's very nice that they put unions, so if ever you do wanna replace it, it's very simple to do, because again, you do have two unions on either end. Up at the top, you are gonna see the return nozzles. These are pretty nice. Uh, you can, I believe you can install any other nozzles that use um, Nordlock, I forget the exact name of these, but any other nozzles that use these adapters, it's pretty simple. They just throw it onto there and you're done. So here you can really see me starting to put together the unions um, themselves. One important thing to look out for in the unions when you are assembling them is you, you're going to notice they have O-rings. And this is with all unions, not just uh, unions from here. It's very important that you make sure that they are seated in where they need to be. You can see kind of the ring uh, here. I noticed in mine, some of them did fall out. Luckily, they were in the box where all the plumbing is, so it was very simple to see. And here you can see my daughter trying to come in, not trying to step on anything and watch her. She hits every single thing. It's, <laughs> I found her pretty comical. She really tried to sneak in, not touch anything. And look at that. Everything got touched and everything got moved. <laughs> so now with all that out of the way, uh, once you do got it again assembled, make sure your O-rings are there. It's also important that you also find the rubber spacers that are going to be on the, I want to say it's a male end. It's pretty much the part that threads from the bottom of the tank to the top of the glass you can see there's a rubber o-ring here and on the opposite male ends which again this is what's going to come from the bottom which uh, you could see the rubber uh, piece here and this is where the union is going to be on the bottom this is where you're going to thread it in from again make sure that if an o-ring needs to be there an o-ring is there and pretty much the best way to know if you look in your box and there's no more o-rings uh, it's also pretty easy to see exactly where they're supposed to be seated before I do begin, I think a dry fit uh, would probably picture it a little bit better. You can see this is the inside of the tank, then the glass, and this comes in from the bottom, and that's where you thread it. You don't want to over-tighten this, uh, get it tight enough, because that seal, if it's over-tightened, it may expand way too much. And then from the bottom, again, this is once you're past the glass of the tank, that union would attach to this mill thread here. I found it was a lot easier to start with the main drain. Again, remember your rubber seals, make sure your O-rings are in. Once they are in and once you've verified that they are fully seated, you can then go by inserting the main drain into the overflow box. Again, this one's going to go right dead in the middle. Now try and get it as best you can aligned over the hole because it's only going to make the next step a lot, lot easier. So next you're going to want to grab your male side of it. Again, make sure your rubber spacer is there. And remember, this one is right in the middle. And if you did it right and aligned it correctly, this can totally be a one-man job. Obviously, two people can help you. But this one, you can see I got it aligned 
pretty close to center. I then started threading it. Make sure if you sense it tightening up, you don't want to cross thread it. So take it easy and you'll sense once it's fully tightened. Now this, you don't want to use a tool to hand tighten it guys because the rubber spacer it's in there, you do not want to fully, fully, fully compress it. It doesn't need to be super tight. Again, there's a seal on the inside being the O-ring and then a seal right on the outside, which is the one you can see here. Next is going to be your emergency drain. Again, make sure all your O-rings are fully seated. You're going to repeat the same exact step you just did. This one's going to go on the very far left of the, of the overflow. And again, just repeat the same exact steps that I just showed you. So that one again, slide it in to the very far left. Now, last step is going to be to install your main return this is obviously coming from your pump and this one's going to be again the same exact thing you're going to use the same exact method just obviously remember the check valve make sure you fully tighten everything and pay attention to the arrow of the check valve if you install that wrong obviously water's not going to be flowing the pump will just be doing nothing but you know it'll be pretty easy and in this one it goes on the very far right once you are happy with pretty much the tightness of everything again making sure i can't repeat this enough time making sure you got your right o-rings with the right rubber spacers again not wanting to over tighten them but once you got these fully seated you can see i have the first two the main drain and the emergency these are the 40 millimeter ones and then this one here is the 32 millimeter ones the next step is going to be to grab your main drain which you can see here that one's very easily known with the gate valve you're gonna come and pretty much thread on the union to remember the O-ring that goes in between the union. And that's very simple. Just thread them on. Again, they don't need to be super tight. Make sure you have your right angle before you fully tighten it. Once you do this, next is gonna to be to do your emergency. That's obviously the one without the gate valve. And lastly, you're gonna install the union on your main return. If you wish to install the dual manifold, it's actually very simple. You're going to notice there is a very small, or not, I wouldn't say super small, but there's a small little screw attached to your return. You may need a tool to loosen this. Mine was about hand tight. Uh, once you do have that fully off, these threads are going to thread right into that piece. And it's very simple and straightforward. You can opt to put some Teflon on these. Again, it's really your call. If you want to be super safe about it, you totally can put Teflon. <clears throat> if you're okay with uh, how tight it's holding up, you really don't need to. Uh, but again, it's really your call. So threading these is very simple. Thread it on to where it's pretty tight. Again, do not over tighten this. this these are plastic parts. Uh, so if you do over tighten it, you do risk obviously breaking them off. Threading on the valves for the manifolds themselves are self-explanatory. Again, you can opt to put Teflon right on the end of the threads. Being plastic, don't over tighten them. Just hand tight should be fine. And if you do end up putting Teflon, it should make a very good seal. Once it's all said and done, it should look something like this. And the last step is going to be to install the two main returns, which is very simple and straightforward. You'll find the main horizontal bar that's going to unite both the right and the left side. That one just sits here on the very top. You do not need to cement this, so I wouldn't recommend uh, using PVC cement at all. Just push tight is more than enough. On the end for these, you can opt to put Teflon. For these, I wouldn't worry about the Teflon because if it does leak, which I highly doubt, it's obviously gonna be going either to the tank or to the overflow, which won't really be a big deal. Remember these, you only want to hand tighten them. Don't over tighten them. You should need any tools. You don't want to tighten them to the point where if you ever do need to do maintenance, you cannot get them off because that will not be good. Once it's all said and done, you put your nice glass water box cover here on the overflow. You can see it looks nice and sleek on the top. You come to the bottom and it's pretty much the same exact thing. Clean, everything looks nice install. I guarantee if you had your buddies come over and they checked this out and you told me you did it on your own, they'd believe it. <laughs> they think you went out and you bought all these crazy gate valves and they're like, man, you measured everything perfectly. Um, but yeah, it's very simple, very straightforward. I think Waterbox did a great job of making plumbing easy. That excuse of people saying plumbing is way too difficult, I really think it was blown out of the water by how easy Waterbox did make it. So that's going to conclude this week's episode here on Eat Sleep Brief. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. We have a lot of videos coming up in the future just because this week I got bombarded with a lot of equipment. It's a good thing, trust me, I'm not complaining. Uh, so you're gonna see a lot more videos coming out. I'm doing my best guys to push out two videos a week. I don't know if you've seen, I've actually been doing that for I think the past two or three weeks uh, just because there's so much content I'm, I'm having arriving. 
it would take forever if I just did one video a week. But nonetheless, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys saw how quick and easy it is to put together a water box a plumbing. It's very easy. Not to mention, guys, the equipment they give you. You guys saw the gate valve and the two manifolds really top of the line you know it's not till you feel them in person where you get to really admire the quality of them and you see that they're really smooth as far as how they close how they open so guys that's going to be it if you guys have any questions comments or concerns please them down in the comment box below if you haven't subscribed maybe i earned your subscription i'd really love to have it give me a thumbs up if you guys like the video it actually really helps me out it helps other viewers also get access to this video so a thumbs up is always very much appreciated so that's going to be it for today's video guys really hope you guys enjoyed it if you guys again have any questions or comments or concerns put them down below as always happy reefing